you in Europe? Your time is nigh. Oh, shit! Oh, oh, th this can't be happening. I I'm... Uh... You're dead, Bob. As a doornail. And not a pretty one. doesn't matter. Matthew Benjamin Yorick, you are dead, and I am here to guide you on your way. No. I, I mean, it's not my time. I, this can't be real. You can't be real. Uh, are, are, are you an angel? <laughs> or God? <laughs> and I thought your face was priceless when I was in that ridiculous getup. Sorry, you literally have no idea how often someone mistakes me for their religious idol. <laughs> I've sinned so much they made a new commandment just for me, kid. <laughs> I've even had a couple of poor saps think that I'm the devil just because I have breasts. I am Terminus Incarnate, the Celtic sin-soaked spitfire. You will refer to me simply as Jane Doe. But enough about little old me. It's time to move on. Listen here, Jane. I can't leave. I, I can't go anywhere. Not yet. I, I have to get to the hospital. I have hospital's to get to not gonna help you, idiot. You're already dead. They carried your body off. No, you don't understand. I can't leave. I can't go anywhere. I fucking refuse! Holy balls. Do you want some cheese with that wine? Where are you gonna go? You run out in front of a car and get <clears throat> intimate with its grill and expect the next person you meet to answer your existential questions? I'm not with the Winchester boys. I'm not here to deal with your mid-death crisis. Death is what you make of it, so is the afterlife, so move on. But, but... But, but, but nothing. You need to trust me. I've been doing this since man's automated toilets were maggot-ridden chamber pots. Okay, look. You see that planet? That's the closest one with life on it. And the people there welcome death. They spend their infinitely small lives preparing for whatever comes next and praying for the moment that their heart stops beating. They live and prepare for the next level that existence provides. You can learn a thing or two from them, Matt. Matt? Oh, God damn it. Hey, uh, I need a gin and tonic. On the rocks. Uh, better make it a double. The weirdest thing just happened to me. I saw my doppelganger, and then this girl, she, she comes up to me, and she says, uh, excuse me. Hey, 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 hello. Hey, 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 hey. Come on, you have some nerve leaving while I was in the middle of telling you about the secret alien civilization humanity doesn't know about yet. You know, I liked you better with the cheap costume. With the cheap costume on. Hey, uh, hey, how did we get here? The faster you come to grips with the fact that you were dead as a doornail, uh, Okay, the well, what the hell is a doornail, all right? And why are you even here, lady? Look, I'm an envoy. I take people who are dead and I send them on their way. We get you once you're born and we keep tabs on you your whole life. So, when you decide to run from death to a rat infested pub, I know. And I'm mildly annoyed. Oh, you're pissed off, huh? You've been spying on me my entire lifetime. I mean, I mean, what kind of sick, ectoplasmic freak would voyeuristically look into other people's private lives? And in my defense, those Playboy magazines were totally planted. Oh? And what about the Playgirl magazine? I have no idea how any of them got into my closet. Oh! You think all envoys are perverts? Well, deal with it. Most of them are. It's not just anyone who looks into your entire life, though. It's just me. An entire lifetime, right? Just to watch someone grow up.
I want to go back to the bar, Jane. First, admit the playgirl was totally yours. Fine. I'll find my own way back. Matt, you don't have all night, you know. Oh, humans. The whole secret alien civilization thing, I'll buy you a drink. What alien thing? Don't worry, kid. I know what your favorite drink is. Yo, barkeep, two gin and tonics, please. Come and run up, miss. How? Envoys aren't exactly dead. We get artifacts to appear in front of you, organ canisters. It's one of the perks of having to corral entire planets into what lays beyond the scope of mortal existence for the duration of... This job is gonna be the death of me. Real funny, Jane. You know, your job sounds both sucky and soul-crushing. And not to mention a bit depressing. Hey, is it too late for me to join? Should I send in a resume or a list of references? Like, I don't know, maybe the Grim Reaper? Or, no, how about God? <laughs> yeah. Or, or maybe an interdimensional traveler. No, you snarky twit. The only way to do what I do is by committing a crime of cosmic proportion. Which is harder than you might think. It's either this probation as punishment, or something much worse. What'd you do? I'd tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. <laughs> I, I know that dying was the most <laughs> dramatic thing to happen to you, but the alternative isn't any easier, Matt. Listen, I like you. You're a responsible young man. Always have been. Loyal, too. Like the way you stayed faithful to your girl till death did you part. I told you those magazines were planted. It's really your sense of humor that gets me, though. Remember that time that you laughed at Janice Snelding when she fell out of that window in third grade? <laughs> <laughs> Priceless. <laughs> Wait, am I gonna go to hell for that? Stay on point. Bottom line, I like you. And I'm in a giving mood, so... You have until the hour of the wolf to make your choice. Cross over or stay here in the twilight zone for eternity. Wait, so I don't have to cross? No, it, it was rhetorical. You have to cross. Every action has a consequence. But you said... Listen, there are worse things that lurk in this world, Matt. You don't want to become one of them. Well, I can't sit here and do nothing. What the hell is that thing? This is you. Well, will be you if we don't cross over. What happened? If you stay, the left of your conscious being will be Oh, and then you'll haunt your nearest and dearest until... Take me back, right now, Jane. Honestly, I think you look better this way. Jane! Ultimately, it's your choice. I understand running away from death, believe me. I gotta ask, though, why go to a bar? Why not to your expecting wife? I wouldn't expect you to understand. But my wife was finally pregnant with a boy, and I've always, always wanted one. 
You stare at the picture tenderly. You haven't even met him yet, and you already know that you would give up the world for your son. I know this story from the outside looking in, remember? What I want to know is, why would a man who died while rushing to the hospital spend his final few moments talking to his guide? I, I don't know if I could face her. I mean, I don't know what would be worse. The fact that I won't ever be able to hold my own son or choose his name. Or seeing my wife answer the phone call it tells her that I'm, that I'm dead. You know, she was the one who said I should take a day to myself, not worry about her, the bills, or the baby. But I'm the one dumb enough to run out into the street. Look, Yorick, we all have our lots in life. Sometimes the bad men live long and prosperous lives, and the good ones die young, and others have to take said good ones away. Some decisions are made for us. She'll name your son after his father. He'll be Matthew Dean Yorick. And Grim is a total pushover. No. <laughs> yeah, he only waves that scythe around because without it, he'd piss himself. <laughs> <laughs> and the cloak? Burn victim. <laughs> he burned his own hut down in his sleep. <laughs> he looks like if, if Char Darth Vader had a baby with a ring wraith. <laughs> You know, I gotta ask, um... Well, when your charges watch a lot of TV, you pick up on what's trending in pop culture. No, no, <laughs> no. I was gonna ask, uh, are all envoys like you? I'll take that as a compliment. And, no. Most of them think they're such hot shit for cheating death, but... We all pay our dues. So, uh... How do you not end up like a... You know, like a pile of walking rot. Do you remember that cosmic sin I mentioned earlier? Some people, the really selfish ones, are willing to kill their guides for a bit more time. You killed your envoy? Yeah. I've been wandering ever since. Well, at least you got to spend a little more time with your loved ones. No, I, I don't have loved ones. My first and last was taken from me way too early. It's the only memory I have of when I was still alive, and it's painful as all hell. You lose who you are. It's the price you pay for wanting to be remembered. To be something, anything, to someone, anyone. And I know. Stupidly ironic, right? It's better to die with happy memories than to live like I do. It's dusk. Are you ready? I think so, but... But nothing. I'll get some money from your health insurance and a reimbursement from the jackass that parked in front of your face. If he's feeling especially guilty, they'll get a new house out of it. You know, I'm glad you're not mad at him for smashing the ugly out of you. Forgive him, Father. He knows not what he does. Real funny. 
Just take it moment by moment. So is there a door or a light at the end of a tunnel or something? Death comes for us all, each in a different way. You just have to want to go and you go. Remember, Matt, you're loved. You'll live on in your son's name and your wife's heart. But where does it go? Heaven? Hell? Philadelphia? I wouldn't want to spoil the surprise. Alas, poor York. I knew him well. <laughs>